Riders ready, watch the gate. Welcome back to the Dirty Knobs Podcast. This is a special episode in that we cover the recap of the Dirty Fest. That was our vintage BMX extravaganza in Southern California. Um, we're going to tell you what we saw, what we felt, what we thought. Uh, a special thanks needs to go out to all of our sponsors, our vendors, our volunteers, our friends, uh, everybody that was there. Fantastic. If you weren't there, you won't want to miss next year. And is there going to be next year? How can you have the dirty knobs without the deuce? Of course, next year. Anyway, um, enjoy the show, uh, and we'll catch up to you later on in two weeks when we have our uh, our next episode. Keep it dirty. Hey. 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 <laughs> we got Dude, rest and relax and back in action, baby, after dirty fest. <laughs> you were <laughs> dude that that was a tough monday <laughs> that was the walk of the zombies on monday <laughs> i mean look <laughs> when i left you you were you were already kind of <laughs> you should have seen him at the trailer jv he oh yeah just, <laughs> yeah he was in slow motion and just like <laughs> picking things up setting down <laughs> it up, setting it down he was so confused <laughs> he, he said i was i was i was picking up my feet when i was walking and i started, he said in the afternoon i started to slur <laughs> he he so started, tired he was uh, he was slurring like he was drunk when we hadn't been drinking <laughs> we hadn't had any, not one single beer and I, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> he was tired Done. But dude, what a weekend! Wow. Mm. Yeah, it wow. was pretty. It was pretty awesome. It was. Wow. The, I didn't have. My expectation wasn't really, you know, like I, I tried not to have a an expectation about it. Mm -hmm. But man, it was. It was pretty awesome. The. I think more so the attitude. Yeah, that's the one. That's the part that really was awesome about it. I mean, yeah, we had and I and I I tried to rough some numbers together, which I thought you would find interesting. You know, yeah. just the way that I put it together to, on total total. No, no, I'm just saying, <laughs> JV and his numbers, man. He always yep. saying, "Give us the I stats, JV. Give us the stats." <laughs> but but I think what was really cool about it was just like hearing after. And even during, like, I'm just having so much fun. This is cool. I'm just, you know, like, that to me was the part. I didn't, you know, I didn't see trying to do those moto sheets during the day was a little tough. So I didn't see people that much. But everyone I would run into while I'm running up to the, you know, to the announcing tower or starting gate is like, this is great. Thank you. And thankful. That was another yeah. thing. Thankful. thankful. Yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, i'm no, thinking no. we're just putting this thing together like you know it's fun for, you know like it was a an idea we had like a fun idea you know you're welcome but you know the thank you thing kind of got me like you know well it was you know what though think about remember how we were last year when we went to frogtown yeah yeah remember how we felt yeah we, true we, we provided an event right frogtown's a long ways from socal yeah so there was a lot of people at our event that had never been to one of these events they hadn't been to frogtown they didn't understand the energy and the vibe right 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 and so they were blown away as we were i mean frankly that's what motivated us to do it right we had yeah. so much fun at frogtown that we were like man this is amazing and then we were like, wow, we're, you know, where can we do this? Well, we could do this at this place. And, but so what you got to see JV was you got to, you got to see the other side of people being as stoked as we were last year at Frog Tank. Right. Right. Exactly. So I ask you guys, what, 
what were some of the favorite things that really stoked you from the weekend? I mean, there's a lot, but like we should go round Robin, just kind of talk about what, what those things are, what comes to mind. Well, I got, I got, I got a couple of things that were really cool for me. Um, I got three, three top ones for me. I mean, it, there's, I think I kind of, I think I know two of them. Yeah. So it, the, there, so it's weird, right? There's specific things that were good. And then like overall vibe or overall energy or Saturday night or those type of things, but like right. specific to me, personal to me. Yeah. My, my, the first obviously is racing with my kids. I mean, that was insane, dude. I, I knew I, I had a feeling that was one of them. It I, I had, had to be. Had, yeah, to, had be. to be. I mean, it was how, how awesome. How awesome is that? And against your boys. Not yeah. really against, but with your boys. Yeah, no, it was it was really cool, man. Like um uh it was surreal, is what it was. Yeah. When I was on the track. Each time I was on the track with them, it was just like this surreal thing, man. And like I was talking to him the whole time while I was racing. Yeah. Like, telling him, you know, go here, go there. Like we were talking back and forth the whole race, man. It was really cool. Um, Did you clean your room? Did you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done? I saw you left the plate on the table. Damn it. <laughs> exactly. Mom's going to be up your ass. Uh, yeah. If I bump you, you better not fall. Cause your mom's going to be up my ass. <laughs> No, um, oh. but that for sure was my, was my top. Um, I had a couple other things that were really cool. Um, my mom getting to come out and watch me race and watch the boys race was pretty special to me. It's been a long time since she's been able to see me race and really for BMX. It's been since gosh, man, like nineties, you know? So, um, you know, I saw her on Sunday morning Yeah, and I said, do you have your sticks? <laughs> and she goes, Oh my God, I forgot the sticks. <laughs> yep. I'm sure she went and found some. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I, I saw her Sunday morning too. And I ran right up to her, gave her a big hug and uh, told her, you know, uh, how it, we had to have our number one fan at the event. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. So glad she was there and thanked the Pavlovskis for, for making her come up, bringing her out. It was awesome. Right. Yeah, it was it was great, man. And so for her to be able to 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 be involved with um to be out there and see <clears throat> myself, the boys racing, um, you know, I know how I know how important that was to her and I know how special yeah. it was to her. Um and she got to see so many people from back in the day when we used to race, man. And um, you know, she had the time of her life, man. I mean, she really did. Like that so I mean, that's up there and on par with um, me racing with my boys to be able to see my mom have so much fun at the races like that. It's been a long time, man. And so mountain and, bikes and, go, and going to races, man, was a was a huge part of your mom's life. It was. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, and yeah. it was mountain bike was different, right? Because I started mountain biking in my um, early to mid 20s. So I was it was. She went to mountain bike races, but it wasn't the same as when we went to BMX racing, right? I mean, I, I've told the story when I went to Reno uh, a bunch of years ago, and, and I told her on the way to the race, if I didn't win, my, if I didn't win, I was quitting. And she, like, she literally had anxiety attack in the car because that was her life. So it was really cool, man. That was, that was, a, that was a fantastic thing um, for sure. And then the last thing, man, uh, is that. Yeah, dude, it's awesome. It tears, it tears me up to hold it and show you guys, man, because it's such a um for John. John Cruz made these for all of us guys, um, and for John to take the time and knowing how hard this must be for him to create, especially when you look at the top and my. So each of us got an award. Mine was uh best hair in bmx <laughs> so um so he put all these these strands of hair on there man he had to cut these things out of sheet metal and then they're tack welded on to uh a scalp he created a scalp on there 
Um, this is just really, really heartfelt and thoughtful. You know, he, John took time to think about us. And then he took time to, to source all those things out, hand cut those strips, um, get the pieces, bend the things that he bent, tack weld that stuff. I mean, dude, above and beyond, man. So, um, yeah, man, that was super, super special. Like, uh, I mean, and that thing sits in, it's not the, I will say it's not the cleanest trophy case, but I have a trophy case in my garage. And in there is a couple of World Cup trophies, um, overalls that I have, and then my dad's hat, my mm. dad's Uber hat, on top of one of my World Cup trophies, and that sits next to it. I made a that is awesome. Trophy. So, um, yeah, man, super special. Those are my those were my three biggest highlights. I mean, we could go on on highlights, but those are special to me. Those were special things for me. JV, wow. <clears throat> no, no, Mike, go ahead. Well, I, I, I won't go mine in a row. I'll just say this: that trophy from Tom Cruise, for him to take the time to, to take the time and energy and to make each one of us, of us an individual trophy that represented. He said he feels I thought long and hard about picking out something about each one of you and building it with the thought of that in there. Right. And uh, and now rests. You know, I only have trophies. That's all I have in my home. I have two trophies. My very first BMX trophy, mm -hmm. and my Nora Cup. And now that rests on the same shelf with those two trophies wow. because that's how much it means to me. I mean, as you know, I'm I, you know, I'm not quiet about it. He's my hero. He's the yeah. I patterned myself after. And for him, for us, amazing. And something that I, I don't know if it was James' wife, Joy, or my wife, Sierra, that said, wow, you've made three grown men cry. <laughs> you did <laughs> it was a moment it was a moment it was a moment yeah yeah jv i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna wipe my eyes off camera You were <laughs> yeah i mean uh not not in order but yeah I, I mean here i've got my trophy i shipped it from um when i was in San, went from san diego but I've got mine too. I mean, it sits on a shelf over there. And I think, you know, I do, re I do remember him when he gave it, he said, in addition to what you said, he said, this is how I see you guys. Yeah. That was one, that was one thing. And then he goes, you know, I tried to find a little flat brim hat for the guy, but I couldn't find one in time. <laughs> it's crazy, and I was right? like, and I was laughing. I go, shit. And then, um, yeah, mine was number one wingman in BMX. That was his, uh, that's what he put on the plaque, but um, amazing. I mean, it was a, it really was a moment when he gave that to us. It was pretty awesome. I, I'm going to say uh, it, it just, I'll just keep going, Mike, in terms of like thoughts, you know, my wife, Joy, which, um, you know, some people got to meet for the first time. Um, she's never been, she doesn't know the life of BMX. Like when I tell her we do the podcast or she sees the pictures, you know, here in, in, in my office and the Jersey, she, she can't, she has no idea. Like she can't relate that to anything, you know, like the, our culture and what it was like, but what, when we, when we were there, she got to see how everybody was just kind of like, it was the brotherhood and BMX, which we say all the time, but wow. it really, it really is. Everyone is, even if you don't know the person, they come up to you like, Hey, blah, blah, blah. you know, it really is such a, such a cool, you know, friendship. And she didn't get to see that part. Uh, she did get to see that part and she didn't know about it. So I thought to me, that was a, that was a pretty cool moment. Um, uh, JV, that, that I remember. Yeah. You know, what's, you know what I think is really cool about that is her first experience at a BMX race wasn't what modern BMX is now. She yeah. got to, she got to get a taste of what it was like when we, when we were doing it. Right. I think that's awesome, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she got to see it. Yeah. You know, it's almost like putting, going back in time, right? Right. And, 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 and putting her in there. <laughs> exactly. No, it is. That's what these events are. So I think it's fantastic that her first experience was, at this event and she yeah. got to really experience that energy and that vibe right because it, it is different 
Yeah. Right. I, I love what our buddy Van May said. He goes, he said, thank you guys. You made me feel 13 again. Yeah. yeah. So, that was pretty cool, man. Yeah. Right. Hey, going back in the time machine. It yes. is. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, um, that guy was having the time of his life. He really <laughs> did. He, he had so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Coming from Ohio. Right. Yeah. I mean, he had so much fun making the trip over. Um, I think, I think, um, Eric highlight was also watching you raise your kids because I wish, you know, you kind of like, if you have kids, you, you want to, I think every, every parent wants to experience that where you're competitive a little bit with your kid. And I, and then somebody posted a picture of you, um, Ethan's in front of you and you are like, you could see the, your eyes looking to the bottom, the, the right side of his tire. He's kind of in front of you a little bit, but yeah. you can almost see you're getting ready to set him up. You're ready <laughs> yeah. to go on the inside to set him up. You could see it. Yeah. I mean, it, was, it, was, it is pretty cool. And the fact that you raced in fucking work boots. <laughs> you raced in work boots. <laughs> That's a trophy. That's take, that is taking it old school right there. First, first <laughs> David, first David Clinton in his work boots in the seventies, and now you and yours, man. Yeah, keeping it old school. I, I mean, loved it, dude. Come on, man. That's like you got you. Fa- it's almost like you found the bike, you got on it, and you got on the cake. <laughs> That's literally. Mike just hey you 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 want to know what's crazy about all this is uh. I wasn't going to race. I didn't want to race. And Mike, come to find out, didn't want to tell me to race, but he really wanted me to race. Yeah. I don't know who it was. Somebody said, man, you should, I think it might have been Ethan, maybe. Man, you should race. And as soon as someone oh, cracked the seal. I dude, was waiting for somebody, please say it. Somebody, <laughs> please say it. It's like I had, to, my, I had my hands on the grips. My arms were bent. <laughs> It's waiting to shove that bike at him. And I said, <laughs> I don't, I said, ah, no, nah, no, nah, I don't even have a bike. And he did. Yeah, you do. So yeah. I was like, ah, all right, man, we'll, we'll give it a shot. And, um, went up and did a, I did a practice run, dude. I had so much fun. Yeah. On that bike. Like yeah. it was awesome. I loved it. I was like, dude, this is really, really fun. I put some Mike had street tires on it, so I put some uh, Kinda small blocks on there, and man, that but I was just able to hook up lines. I could ride wherever I wanted to ride. I could ride inside on any corner, wherever I wanted. It was just amazing. The bike handled so good. So, um, you could anyways, cut the track on the inside out, of that fourth turn too, but you chose not to. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, they had. Uh, uh, so come to find, I got a call uh, three days ago and a text from Art at Race Inc. He said, hey, hey man, I, g- give me a call. So I called him back and he said, dude, I, I didn't know you were even going to race, man. And you jumped on Hollywood's bike and man, he goes, I would have got you a bike. I was like, oh man, I wasn't going to race. I was just going to, I was just, you know, Hollywood borrowed me the bike. I just ran it stock with, threw some tires on there. He goes, Hey man, we want to give you, we want to give you, we want to, we want to hook you up. So, um, the Carter clan, myself, Ethan and Cole, we're all now riding racing at. All Utah. right. All right, brother. Yeah. Well, good. I'm putting that other, I'm putting that used one up on eBay now then. Yeah. Now I might get yeah, his, bike, his bike winner, back. winner, winner bike. Yeah. Doubled. <laughs> Doubled. <laughs> no, it, um, I loved it, dude. The bike was, I mean, I, I haven't ridden any other 26s, but that one yeah. was fantastic. I loved it. And I, I had a blast, dude. So I think that's awesome, man. And the and kids am, must be stoked. Oh, yeah, they are. On they're, that. They're, they're pretty pumped about it. Um, you know. Tell them, though. Cruisers don't, cruisers don't count. Cruisers don't count. Cruisers don't count. <laughs> well, they counted for fun. And, yeah. Uh, and so, um. I'm pretty grateful, man. I'm appreciative. Thank you, Mike. I know it goes without saying, but I, I do appreciate you letting me borrow that bike and and ride because it it led to some really special moments on the weekend. And uh, so yeah, man, that was good times, man. I'm stoked about that. Yeah, that is awesome. That is awesome. Well, the, um... watching, watching the races that I got to see, uh, which weren't many because we were all busy, 
Um, but I'll tell you, one of the races, I, there were two races that come to mind that I wanted to point out as highlights that I got. Uh, number one was, uh, well, I'll save number one. Mm-hmm. But the second best race I saw was the race when, uh, in the main event, when EC would jumped out there and Glenn Pavlosky, who was on fire all weekend. Dude, it looked yeah. so it looked like racing the orange Y. He was just back at it, man. So fast. He, what, in he, the main he, event. In no. the, go ahead. I was gonna say, even my wife, she actually asked me after the race, she said she actually said to me, she goes, Does Glenn still race BMX? Like, does he go to the track and ride or what? And I'm like, No, I he doesn't, I don't think he's ever been to the track in years. She goes, <laughs> He was hauling ass. Yeah. I mean, I had several guys say that to me this week was, wow, man, Pav was going. Yeah. Like he's been racing all the time. He looked great. Yeah, he was and flying. When he took off, when he got out of the lead in, after the first turn and you were behind him, I stood up on the top of the gate and I just shook my head and I go, this poor bastard, how many times is this going to happen? <laughs> all these years, it's still going to happen. <laughs> and everybody was cheering and yelling, and every, but everybody knew it was a matter of time. Dude. Just a matter of time. And well, I... <laughs> uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a special moment for all of us that got to witness it. It was, uh, and I'm sure it was special for you and Glenn to be on the track doing the same thing all over again. Oh man, yeah, I mean, that'd be fun. I wouldn't, you know, to 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 share a podium with with my. Gosh, probably honestly, he's probably the longest friend I have from BMX. Yeah, you know, so I met cool. Him early, early on when I first started racing BMX, so, I mean, it's it's just wild to think that. Well, I mean, it's 40, 42 years later, more 40, 44 years later that we're, we are still racing BMX against each other. So, um, yeah, I got, I, I got a little gift from Charlie Williams on that one, man. Cause my gates, my gates sucked and, uh, Glenn's so nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Yeah. <laughs> but Pav got out on me and I knew he would, and he was on the outside of me, but I, and Charlie Williams was getting fast starts. And I was like, fingers crossed. Those guys get a little bit come together and I can duck under and Charlie bumped into Glenn and slid out and I ducked under. And then I was, <laughs> I was like, okay, now I'm in second. Now I can work on catching up to him and setting him <laughs> up. And I can relax a little bit. Oh man. So fun. What was the second race you saw? That was the no, that was the second best race I saw. Yeah, what was the first one? I mean, it first best race I saw really one of the highlights for me on the weekend was you know, people that don't know that weren't there, or even the people that were there but didn't go to it. Saturday night we had the Haro sponsored pit bike derby, where Haro had not just Haro, but uh Xavier Mendez and Brian Blyther and Mike Dominguez built these 12 these 12 16 inch bikes so everybody had to ride had to race the same exact bike on on a custom built pit bike derby course built by eric carter and it was unlights in the middle of a party and man it was spectacular it It worked out so well the lighting everything about it the way the track was johnny johnson spinning the wheels making Ah. the music it was so good and then the highlight of that, you know, we had four little kids that signed up. We, you know, it was, it was really an adult race, you know, a bunch of hooligans, but we had four little kids race. And one of them was a young lady named Lila. Mm. And, uh, and Lila was, stole the show, in my opinion, stole the show. Yeah. And she was nothing, you know, her Crocs and having a big smile and <laughs> oh, no. And in the main event, she, uh, you know, I gave her a little bit of a head start. I, you know, I pushed her and then didn't say go to the rest of the guys yet. So she got out there and she was, she came into the last turn, man. I think she was in second place. She came in the last turn and the young man in third just cleaned her clock, man. <laughs> just shoved her into the banners, into the, and just, she ate it. And, you know, the yeah. whole, crowd was, whole crowd was cheering for her anyway. And then when she fell, she got up quick, brushed herself off, picked her bike up, and rode it to the finish line. 
and everybody was cheering, man. It was the highlight. Uh, she went into the banner. She did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was spectacular, Eating. man. That that to me that that was what racing was about. That was great. Yeah. Yeah, that was that that evening was a that was a special evening for sure, man. I thought it was uh I, I thought it was definitely I mean there's a lot of the whole weekend's a highlight, but like I thought Saturday night was kind of a pinnacle of um of fun for everybody. There was a, a pretty good gathering. Everybody came back out to the to the venue. Um we had the the beer trailer out there, um, pouring beers and Johnny with the music. Hollywood, you did a fantastic job on the mic and the starting and mm -hmm. stuff, creating energy. It yeah. was just it was just a good time, man. And everybody was just laughing and smiling and carrying on and it but was, you see I, everybody dressed up. Yeah, I know. People dressed up. I right. It was, yeah, it was great. Um, but I think, you, you know, JV, you said you tried to go in without expectations. I I had some expectations, and I felt like Saturday night really met. It really was the vision for that. Yeah, the vision I had with the track and the lights and with you guys and all that. Every, it was all of it. I think yeah, I remember I, you explaining it to, when I went over it when I when I when I came out early, early, and you were yeah, you guys were telling me, oh, it's gonna there were and there were there were gates there, you know, like the yes. fences were there. Oh, it's gonna turn over here and it's gonna go in those trees. And I mean, to see right. it come to life, EC, yeah. you did a great job, great well, job, and and even like Mike with the way you envisioned the banners going around. And I, mean, I think it, that was huge, dude. The yeah. banners. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, JT Racing, for for for, for JT getting those for hooked us. us up. Yeah. Well, yeah. With that. Time, man. Yeah, I really think that by I think by putting those banners all along the the south side of the track, right? It created that. I think that was a huge difference. Yeah. In the atmosphere, it really framed all of the racing in a way that it wouldn't have done that without the banners, man. I thought it was. I mean, when you got, I always bring the water truck out to water it so it wouldn't be dusty for everybody. And you guys had the whole crew out there of, I, I mean, you just had a bunch of people out there just pounding those stakes in and running the banner right. and getting that all. I was like, yeah, okay, this is going to be bitching, man. Cause I hadn't seen the banners before that. They were still rolled up. That was the first time I saw them. I don't think anyone saw the uh, the finished product, right, Mike? You didn't but even we, see the finish. We, we didn't want, we wanted it when people showed up that night we yeah. wanted them to go wow you know and it had the effect man with the lights and the banners and the music right. it really it really changed the atmosphere of, of that little section of the track and it was great yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm i i think i think that was our, our probably our like the biggest congregation of people at one time was at that and i i have to i have to believe that next year that is going to be more people will sign up, right? Because they saw yes. how cool how cool it I was. I think we'll have more signups, and I know I wouldn't be surprised if we doubled the amount of people that come for the party and watch it. Yeah, I'll I say mean, more than double because there'll be twice as many people there, and people were talking about it the next day, and and now people will figure out, oh, I missed out, and and I heard so many people say how fun it was last night. So that yeah. was great, right? Yeah, yeah I that, was that was pretty fantastic. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. So the um the other th the, just I'm going to add a highlight here. Yeah. And I and I and I kind of told Mike I was going to say this. But you got to give some love to the East Coasters, the East Coast crew of Crit Plate that yes. came out and friggin did well. Yeah, dude. Those Curtis guys won team fast. trophy. They won team trophy, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good play team trophy for sure. Yep. Curtis was flying, dude. Curtis. Savage, you knew already, right? Because we saw yeah, him at Frog Town is... and we were like, the, the guy's still still on his game. Yeah, he's fast. Yeah. But yeah. Curtis but was flying. Gotta love it. Gotta love the crit play crew from the east all the way from Rhode Island that came out. Right. Heckling too, dude. Right at the finish line, they had the perfect <laughs> heckler's pit. Right when everybody was gassed coming across the line, and they're just sitting there, just 
<laughs> heckling, dude. I love heckling. It. <laughs> my, my Mike Rodriguez just laying it into everybody. Ah, right. <laughs> that guy's like, like sausages. <laughs> so perfect, man. I hey, saw- hats off and and hats off to the Habs, dude, for putting those guys up in the trailer, man. I know they had a blast. I know I know those guys had a good time. Uh, yeah. But Pav housed those guys in his trailer. Oh, there. that's right. No, he housed them at home. Oh, he did. I think he. I think they stayed at his house. Oh, gotcha. I thought they. I yeah. thought they stayed in the trailer with him. No, because they he had he had everybody over there in the trailer, and I think the house was free. So he, I mean, look at that. He opened the doors. He opened the doors for those guys. Like, yeah, you know, come on in. Yeah, yeah. You, you guys want to? You need a place. Cool, I think they cool. trashed it, but I mean, yep. it's still okay. <laughs> yeah, as soon as they got the fire put out, it was it was okay. <laughs> so, funny. hey, how about Pavs doing a doing a barbecue dinner for everybody on uh, Saturday night at the race? Man, another, cool event. another something. Cool. I mean, hey, but but I mean, what it was for, right? My people, people don't know what that was for. So yeah, all the, the proceeds, the proceeds went to the Davis Finney Foundation on behalf of John Cruz. Yeah, he he did a pulled pulled pork plate. Awesome. And uh, was selling those things, and then put all the proceeds towards the uh, the Davis Finney Foundation. Uh, yeah, man, good people, dude. Well, good speaking people. of good people, there's two people I got to throw a shout out to. One is our production manager, just Justin Shepherd, man. Yeah, we, we have been able. To do this without him he did uh we inv- he was we wanted him he- on here tonight, but he has a family commitment he couldn't get out of he uh i mean he worked tirelessly tirelessly mm. uh, yeah, he was awesome. as hard or harder than the rest of us yeah. and would not have we couldn't have pulled it off without him and in my opinion in my opinion welcome to disagree or argue but my opinion the person that really saved our bacon the guy the hero of the event was billy zierzo Dude, and came on Wednesday. Brother, came out from Wednesday on. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Didn't I didn't didn't ask what we needed. Just jumped in and started stuff. If he saw something that he thought it needed, he would just jump in and do it. Yeah. I mean, hero, hero hey, status. I I posted about it, man. I said he was our rescue ranger. He was the 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 finish line. You know. Whatever you call that, canopy or whatever. Trust. It's Arch. called a tr- trust. Trust. Yeah. He had a big. He was running. He ran back to Home Depot like two times to yep. try and get screws for that thing. Yep. I know. He I was, remember. Yeah, Billy was incredible. Yep. Yeah. Seriously, man. I. I he really so, was. I thought Hans was going to show up, but. I mean, it was to come. Yeah. I don't know what happens. Some I kind mean, of travel I don't know. You know, Hans was he. he you know, with, in Europe, they're using those <laughs> instead of a passport. I think they use the hand scanner and yeah. something that didn't. I don't know. If something didn't line up. <laughs> didn't line up right. Maybe, maybe he maybe couldn't Hans keep it still. still. I don't think he could keep it still. It was, it was, exactly. it was moving something. Yeah. Maybe Hans will show up for the next one. Let's see. Uh, it was a shame i mean there were people there waiting to get something handwritten by him oh yeah, they were. of course of course uh, all right you want you great. want it, you want me to give you a get you want me to have you guess well I, instead of guessing what i what the number was total number of people i think i underestimated it but i can give you an idea of what i think the number was of everyone well, how, how do we know how many people came I mean, because KOA, you know, they take account of everyone that came in. I do know, I can give you one number, 500. That's how okay. many camp spots, that's how many camp spots were, were reserved and used. Okay. Because there's only 500 there and they were sold out, man. Right. All right. So let me, let me tell you what I think. Here's my guess. Just on unique racers, we had five, we had we had over hundred unique racers that raced, that that signed up. You know, they raced multiples, but it was unique, right? So over just over hundred people came and raced. I think that each of those people, probably, I'm just saying, I'm saying uh, they brought 1.5 people with them to come watch or hang out. So. That's about 262 people. The bike show had 52 unique people that probably brought 
that w- and actually we had 136 bikes for the show, which was really good. Um, so we had 52 people there. We had we uh, had 36 vendors, which was great. That's I think they brought probably a minimum three people each, right, to come help and do those duties. That's 108. I think we had a miscellaneous people that came to watch. Threw in a cup, threw in about 50, underestimating. So I'm going to say, Mike, you're very close. I think around north of 175 is my guess. Four, sorry, 475. 475 is north of 475 is my guess. What will be your guess, EC? I, I think that's about it. I was going to say 500. So I, I think you know, JV with his math is pretty spot on. I think it's about 500 people. Yeah. I was going to say between five and 600 people. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's a, you know, cause more people, there are some families that are bigger, some, right. But at conservative number, that's pretty good. That's a yeah. lot. That's a lot of people, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. For our first time, that was great. And you know what? They're amazing to me is how many people this week have said the last two weeks have said, Wow. I'm not going to, I, I, I didn't miss it, but I'm not going to miss it next year. Yeah. People that still didn't know about it. So. Hey, I'm, I'm glad, man. I'm, I think, Ooh. listen, I, yeah, exactly. I think it was the absolute perfect amount of people. I think so too. I think I so wouldn't too. want it to be any bigger. I think um, we learned a lot, a lot. Right. We learned a lot about, the event, um, our strengths and weaknesses, things yeah. we can do better and be more efficient. And I think it was so, I think if we had had, let's say we had double that number this year, we would, it would have been pretty. It, it wouldn't have been as good. It wouldn't have been as good. Well, it. I don't it, think. You're right. We would have, there would have been some things where we would have struggled a little bit. That's but right. I will say, That's right. I will, I I venture to say 90% of the people still wouldn't have noticed if there if it was double 90% of the people would have still went away and said, wow, this is an amazing thing. Mm. Because like we were talking, JV, you were stressing a little bit about the moto stuff and getting those things up and running. I remember yeah. telling you, it's okay, dude, take a deep breath. Nobody's freaking out. It's just us. We're freaking out because we feel stress. Yeah. So I think if we would have had a bigger number, I think the event would have been less fun for us. I don't, I think of course. We, would have, we would have had more stress and we would have enjoyed it less, but I think the majority of the people would have enjoyed it equal to what they did now. Yeah. I, I still can't believe how many people were there that I didn't see. Yes. Oh, I know. Yeah. And, and some of the people I got to see, I got to see for 10 seconds. I know that's that. Honestly, I will say there's a couple, there's a couple things on the weekend that, that were not positive things. And that was probably the the biggest one, which is I, there just wasn't enough time to say hi and chat. Right. With everyone, every one of those, I mean, it's, it's a high school reunion for us. Right. And then, you know, but we were busy running the high school reunion. And so we didn't get to, we didn't get to have those conversations, those conversations that we would have loved to have had yeah. with everybody. That, that was, I was like, I don't know how to fix that. I sure would. I would like to figure out a way for us to try to fix that because I, 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 I do want to chat with those guys, man. Yeah, of course. Of course. I, met, I heard Matt Hayden was there. I never yeah. saw him. Matt Hayden him. was there. I saw him. Yeah, did he tell him. you? Did he tell you that he needed to practice? <laughs> I tell you what, I did mention it to him. I said, <laughs> I said to him, I go, uh, I don't know if you listened to our show. And he's like, you know, yeah, I caught a couple of them. You know, it's really good. And I said, uh, you know, I told the story of when I my last race, and I said, and it involved you. He goes, oh, really? And I said, yeah, we're in Pennsylvania. I can't remember exactly where in Pennsylvania. And you know, I really wasn't practice. I wasn't. I wasn't riding that much anymore. And I, and it was clear because I'd come out of the gate. Okay. I'd be fine. But then kind of like the second, third turn, uh, I would get passed. 
And then it was actually you that came up to me and said, dude, you got to practice. You got to practice, man. <laughs> and I said, and I said, and I remember telling you, you know what? This is my last race. I'm done. I, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not in it enough, you know, to, to, to do it. And, um, and he goes, he said something like, I can't believe I said that to, to you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, or no, it was like, why would I say something like that? <laughs> I think it's fantastic that he did. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I saw him and um, it was fun. It was a good, it was a, it was a laugh. It was a good laugh, you know, which is what what it's all about. But it was, um, yeah. That might, hey, that might have been your last race, but this one, this one was not our last. One. I, I, I am excited about next year already, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be, it was a lot of work. I'm not saying I'm afraid of it, but, um, but yeah, we got, we got a year, we got a year to kind of like try and make it. So we're not as stressed, stressed. Yeah. Well, it, it's going to be, all I know is all the things that we did, we'll do better. And all the things that we can, all the things that we can think of between now and then, we'll just add it on and make it bigger and better. Yeah, yeah. We want to make it better. And, yeah. And the best thing that will happen is everyone will have another great time. Yeah. yeah. I Dude, think so. Brothers, what would have happened without you? Wouldn't have been worth having without you. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I just, I can tell you, as proud as I am of, of EC winning, I'm just as proud as of JV not stressing out and throwing something at me. <laughs> if he had a horn, he would have honked it the whole it time. Was... He would have honked the horn the whole time, man. <laughs> oh, oh. EC would come up. Are you okay, man? Don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> it's, I'm on the computer. Dust is fucking blowing all over my face. I could see kinda... the stress on him and Justin, man. And dude. I would I'd sit there. I'd be like, it's all right, man. It's okay. Like, no problem, dude. Uh, people are like, yeah, uh, you don't have a uh, X class up there. And I know we have a moto <laughs> I'm like, yeah. shit, shit. We forgot the class. We forgot the whole entire moto. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, let me throw this one out there. And right when the gate, we're, we're about to start racing, the generator runs the starting gate right out of gas. Yes. Yeah. Which, which, that was, which, I heard people make comments about that, by the way, Mike, and they yeah, said man. it wouldn't be a race if the, if the gate did not break at some point. <laughs> All right. We're I'm, we're I'm running up the hill, gas can, sloshing gas everywhere, and that's the one moment I get to see Mrs. Morales. Oh, oh my god. Man, did you see her EC? I did. I cried when I hugged her, dude. I did oh too. I god. cried and I it was because gas was getting in my eyes. That's what it was. <laughs> Yeah, I man. wasn't cry. I wasn't crying. I just had gas in my eye, man. I, I did, man. I, I, I hadn't seen Janet so long, man. Oh my God. She said to me, she said, this was on my bucket list to make yeah. sure that I saw you guys. Yep. She said that and, to me too. Yeah. 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 I mean, and, and I, I said to her, I wish Mr. M was here. Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, and they were hanging out under the tent. I mean, I should have made a comment about a blue cooler, but you know, I was like running to the registration thing. You imagine <laughs> it would have been great, yeah, Mister M. Been, oh yeah, my god, would have been great not to spill gas all over her feet. But hey, we had <laughs> the starting game. I got the starting game. I got things I got to do. Oh. <laughs> the highlight. Yeah, um, man, it was so good to see her. Where'd Hollywood go? Oh, he jumped. He did. He pushed the wrong button. I'm the host now. Look at that. You are. Came to me. Came to no. me. <laughs> yeah, Jan said, Jan, you know, and she said, she she actually, I, she might have thanked you guys too, but she said, thank you guys so much for like being such good friends to Robbie and, you know, uh, I mean, under, understanding him for who he is. And, and you know, and it's it's true. Like, you know, like Rob's, Robbie's like our little brother. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Are you kidding me? So it was, yeah, it was great to see uh, Mrs. M, man. I, but dude, that's the type of stuff that I'm talking about, man. We, yeah. I want to be able to sit. I got to talk with her for maybe two minutes. I know. I to, Same here. And I had to run, go do, I don't even know what I was doing, but I'm like, I'll be right back. Yeah. You know? I, know. I came back. I came back down there, but it was, you know, 15 minutes later, she's already 
mingling around somewhere else, understandably. And it's like, you miss that window. So I, I don't know how we fix that, but I certainly want to figure out a way that we have the ability to talk with more of those people. I know we get to experience that, you know, I know, I know really, we have to figure that out where we can say hi to more people. I yeah. think, I think that, um, I was talking to Mike about this EC and I, and I feel pretty strongly about this. You know, we, on the, on the vintage bike thing, there are, there are two other, there are two other ones, you know, throughout the year. One of them is Frogtown, which is the, the inspiration for us. Right. right. And the, and the other one is a Texas one that's happening, I think in, um, in June, yep. end of June is a Texas one. Exactly the same thing. The difference is, is that I think both of those, those events, um, for the right reasons, are incorporating new school race to them. And that's something that we, we all, us three talk about that, that we have no, that's not what we want to do. Like we want to keep this a, an eighties race. Right. Right. The, the, the thing that I think that we should make our mission and I, and I, and I, I believe that you feel the same way about um, two things. One is kind of like the new school riders understanding history, right? Like, uh, that's one of them. And then yeah. the other is like getting kids on bikes, which, which we always talk about. Right. But I think that if we kept it with the old school way, right, we kept it old school, but we said, Hey, you new school riders, you might not have ever done it before. And you don't have to go buy a bike. We right. can figure out how to like have bikes that they can borrow so that right. they can get on a track on the track. Right. And like ride down it, you know, and right. feel what it felt like. Right. with the track that you've built right in the 80s so i think i think that could be you know a, a cool new addition for next year if we figure that out or or we or we create a class where somebody who's on a new school bike has the ability to still ride yeah i mean but we were pretty strict about mike i'm telling him about our conversation, about our conversation. that we had on like wanting to um let let give the opportunity for new school riders to feel, to learn history and like, kind of like get on, get on an old school track and not be intimidated because they don't have a bike, you know, that is old school. And we figure a way out where we have rent, we have a bike that they can borrow so they can, you know, have fun and enjoy it and learn. Um, and, uh, and, and that's what we were talking about. And EC, um, and I, and EC made a comment, like maybe they could, you know, just kind of like ride. Yep. You Which just have a fun. class that isn't isn't yeah. your specific. Or or we have a sponsor that provides us with repop bikes for those that want to sponsor those that want to ride or rent one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean for I think for the experience of riding that kind of stuff. Right. Which I think we I mean, get the feedback from a lot of the different bike companies and, and doing repops is that I think next year it'd be more of a show for them to, to, to hire, yeah. to showcase their, their bikes. And maybe we figure out how to work with them to say, maybe you just have a few that you can, we can loan people, you know, just for yeah. the moto and they bring it back yeah. and then they get it again. And, and, um, cause I think that's something, part of what we're trying to so, do. Something to think know. about. Yeah. Something to think about and talk about. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're, that's, you know, Oh man. Well, listen guys, I got to tell you once again, the, the racing was great, but the best part of it all was seeing everybody that we saw spending the time with you guys, always the best time. And, uh, and spending time with my wife and kids was great too. I mean, they were all big help. So it was great. Yeah. Brother Miranda and David showing up was a highlight for me. Of course. I mean, I haven't seen them yeah. since they were, kids and then ride and then up there's a picture of me david and i on the gate i don't know if he's, you've seen it ec we were we were on the gate uh because we both rode down the track this was after it was over when we were no breaking way. down yeah 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 and uh and right before we went he, right before we went down the track he he says james and the giant peach and he used to say that when he was a kid <laughs> <laughs> that's what my kids called james when they were little james and the giant peach you know, I have and my son had a, my son had a big big beard uh, until he showed up to the race, and I guess the morning of the race, he shaved it all except for a mustache was, to pay homage to his dad. So yeah, that's cool. 
I can't believe you didn't go I, mustache. Oh, dude, I saw that on Thursday. I was like, I'm in 100%. And Sierra was not having it, man. No, said, I thought no. it would be kind of cool if you did. I thought so, too. But she said no. And then, then my daughter chimed in. Dad, I don't think your face... The shape of your face is the same anymore. Oh. <laughs> I was like, all right. I I'm hadn't... not sure, but I think my family just called me fat. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't seen Miranda since she was a little girl, man. I know, right? Like, yeah, that was that was really, really uh that was awesome, man, that she made the trip out. It was yeah. so cool to see her grown up and uh carrying on yeah. and and you know, Saturday night at the at the party, just hanging out, having fun with everybody. Right. She was having a blast. She got dressed up. Yeah, yeah, she did. It yeah. was awesome. Oh, she was the material girl. Yeah, she, she was, was. A material girl. Her and Sierra were both dressed up. It was <laughs> yep. awesome. Yep, loved it. Uh, you know, and and James for our wives to hang out again like they did so many years ago was was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, man, it was, uh, you know, it was all about, you know, our families were great. Uh, having our families there was awesome. But more importantly, and I don't want to get too mushy here, but the uh, the big family of BMX was was a uh, was a great high school reunion, but also like a family reunion for all of our brothers and sisters in BMX and yeah. some moms and dads. And God, that that really uh, that really made my year really yeah. made my year yeah I, I i agree i i thought it was great man um uh i'm proud of what we did man i'm proud of what we pulled off um you know obviously like you guys had said you know we had a lot of help and uh but you know it, we made it happen and uh i think there's people are still talking about it man i mean it's so, awesome we're weeks out now and people are still buzzing about it and that tells me that that we're on the right track and and we did we did it the right way and and it was uh you know it was it was a good time and people are looking forward to coming back so i think it's going to be great yeah got to got to got to thank those guys that are helping us you know promote it afterwards dale and bmx weekly did a lot of stuff there yeah um there um there were so many others that did, that did the photography and and um and kept put kept pushing pictures through so thank you everybody yeah. i mean they had and to more all than our enough. sponsors and all the vendors and everybody else that contributed gave us raffle prizes uh you know it was just uh overall it was a huge success so i have one question for you guys yeah what do you think do we do it again next year i don't know man that was <laughs> long can you imagine can you imagine how mad people would be if we just said, nah, we're not doing it again. They'd be so pissed. I think we got to do it again. I think we got to do it again. We've got to, we've got to uh, see what year two looks like. You know what I mean? I'm sure we change it a little. I'm sure that between now and, and then we're going to, we're going to change it a little bit to make, keep it interesting. And it won't be exactly the same as what we just went through, but um, no, I think that's the, the fun I mean, of the it. Fireworks, the fireworks, and the Shark Tank, and the right, and right, all that. Yeah, the midget yeah, wrestling. We did, yeah, we'll bring that's the midget true. wrestling in. Oh, it's <laughs> all gonna happen. All gonna happen, man. I, I, I think mean, I will tell you, I'm gonna change the track. I've already got ideas about how to make the track. Oh man, more exciting be and better, and and so um, I've actually been looking at old school track drawings and stuff like that. I love it. Yeah. I want to change it up a little bit and make it, you know, I don't want it to always be the same. I want people to be excited. I don't know about you guys, but I remember that was one of the things. Well, JV, you were East coast. So a lot of times you went to the track and it was kind of the same track, but man, for, for us, West coast guys and ABA stuff. Yeah. That was the thing, man. You couldn't wait to get to the track to see the track, to see what it was. Yeah. And it was always different. So I definitely want to always mix it up a little bit so that each year they come back, there's something new, something exciting. Um, I love it. It's like going to a national and not knowing, you know, your first time going there and you don't know what that track's like because you're not bike, a local. And pit bike track too, man. I'm going to change them both. I'm going to make both of them. 
Um, I'm going to make some subtle changes to it to, to make sure I got, I'm going to actually slow the pit bike guys down a little bit so that they pass each other a little more. Cause dude, they, were <laughs> they got flying. speed. They got speed coming down that hill. That first hill was, was dude, freaking straight I, down. <laughs> so I can tell you, JV, I've, I've been at mountain bike festivals and they've done pit bike racing before. And they those the places i've been and they've done it it was not as fast as those guys. those guys were flying dude i think those yeah. bikes were really good they were really good they were, they, the were racing, they were racing for money yeah they were racing for money on 16 inch race bikes yeah yes. crazy yeah. yeah so i want to i want to make every and every bike survived every bike was perfect when we got done yeah, yeah. it was great yeah so i want to i want to make it i just want to make it um yeah, I got some ideas to make some changes and I think it'll enhance the experience. So, um, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a blast and, uh, you know, everybody tell your friends if you had a good time. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the best way, you know, so many right. people, so, so many people thanked us, right. JV, you commented about that. And same as you, Mike, I had the same experience. Um, you know, even post-race, I got tons of messages from people. I'm dude, I had this guy uh what's this guy's name i think it's glenn maybe um pavlovsky no it wasn't Pav. <laughs> his name's glenn ballinger this guy messaged me man and uh he said we traveled from australia to dirty fest it was the best old school weekend ever congrats on the stellar job you guys did putting it together definitely we'll be back next year wow I, I told him, I said, that's a long ways to come support us. That's amazing. I'm so glad you had fun and enjoyed yourself enough to come back. Please introduce yourself next year so I can meet you face to face. And he said, he's definitely coming back and he's looking forward to bringing his friends. That's so great. That's that. And so that's the way people thanked us. And if you really, if you want to thank us, bring a friend, bring a friend, bring, bring, and there was a lot, there was, and Mike, you and I did this exercise. We talked about some old school people that we were surprised that didn't show up. We don't have to go through those names and stuff. But if you if you're an old school BMXer, even if you weren't an old school BMX star from back in the day, if you just raced locals at the Orange Y, Irvine, right. Amarada, wherever, and you're finding this, come out, come have a good right. time. That's the best way you can think of us is to come out and and have fun with us. If you're from Youngstown, Ohio, yes. <laughs> come on out. We'd love to have you. <laughs> there was a picture. Lied, man. There I was a picture what, of nice. Alan. There was a picture of Alan Foster riding with a smile on his face. Did you see that? Did you see yeah. that one posted? <laughs> like he was it. just had a grin oh, on his man. face. I mean, how that like to me is. And it reminds me of the one in Frogtown too. There was one in Frogtown with one of the guys, and he was he was he was laughing going into the first turn, which was like you know kind of hectic. In yep. Frogtown, you you could end up down in a third turn if you don't if you don't <laughs> yeah. make that turn. <laughs> yep. um, but with a smile, with the smile on the face, which is how it should be. I mean, that's yeah. that's the fun of the, yep. of the of this whole thing. It's about having yeah. fun and just getting out there. Even if hey, you're in JV, if some, if, if, hey, JV, if somebody needed a, uh, somebody wanted a t-shirt or, uh, or a stickers, or if somebody wanted, a uh, a poster from the event, where would they go to get that? Even though they weren't there. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to keep that on the dirty fest site. So I think we'll do the merch on the dirty fest site. We're, we're just unpacking now. So as you know, I mean, as both of you guys know, we're, we're unpacking now all this stuff. But we will. We do have some shirts that were left over from the event. We had some. We have some aw awesome, um, you know, like Bob Harrow prints that we had from the, you know, with the with Canvas the logo print, on it. Yeah. yeah, they were really cool. We have those. I'm gonna pull those out and put those on the site. Um, I think some of them were numbered, which is neat. Yeah, we'll, we're we're gonna auction some of those off. Okay. Uh, and and those and. 
You're going to get all that where, JV? www.dirtyfest.com. Correct, correct. It'll all live over there. We'll, we'll convert the way registration was to um, to merch. But, yeah, you can you can get some of the cool Dirty Fest, Dirty Fest stuff um, right there until, until it's gone. Dude. Yep. And, guys, not- always, you can tune in. You Oh, there it is, man. <laughs> it, would be a, it would not be a podcast unless EC would eat it. <laughs> My well, guys, uh, yep. Uh, you know, as always, we'll uh, we'll be back in two weeks with another episode of the Dirty Knobs podcast. Thank you guys all for being part of it. For those that were blessed by going to Dirty Fest, oh man, then you know what we're talking about. And uh, those that don't didn't have the opportunity, uh, do what you can to go next year because you will not be disappointed, man. It's so yeah, awesome. please come. It's it was and, fun. Yeah, please come. It's Good fun. Times. It's a fun Good time. Times. Well, fellas, love you. Yeah, love you guys. That was a lot of fun. It looks like we're a little bit rested, but I'm 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 looking forward to it, man. I'm looking forward to it. It's nice. It's a nice thing. You know, when don't, people are happy, it's a nice thing. Don't like talk it. with food in your mouth, EC. Don't talk with food in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Give, hey it gives you a lot of respect really for like for the organizers of stuff like this and other stuff it's hard it's not easy right. so big big tip of the cap and also i said it before all the people that did registration back in the day in the 80s when it was carbon paper handwritten yeah and then remember they had to hand write all of the motor sheets and yeah. there were hundreds there were hundreds of motors <laughs> handwritten who the hey, hell? And to and to those starters that had to lift the starting gate hundreds of times. Right? A lot of respect for all those. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yep. Yeah. Every job that kept us happy and racing that we really didn't know. I mean, that's a lot. You know, there was a lot that there. Was a lot. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, fellas. All righty. Keep it dirty. Huh. Are, you signing, are you signing off now, or are you just, or is that just a sign off? <laughs> oh, I'm signing off now. I got to get on the road. I just want to tell you this, man. Seriously, it, it's amazing the fact that we pulled it off, that we don't, that we're not negative ten thousand yeah. dollars, yeah, and that everyone thinks we're freaking heroes. <laughs> I know. God dang. Dude, we're not heroes. We're magicians. The magicians, yeah, right. right? Yeah, yeah good and way I'm glad to put they that. didn't. Yeah, and they didn't peek behind the curtain too much, so that was God, good too. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, fellas, love you. All right, love you guys. All right, boys. All right. Okay, boys. Later. Bye. Bye. Hey, this is John Cruz. Uh, no, we're not having an earthquake. I have Parkinson's. What What do you think of that, Michael? Uh, some we ought to pitch in and get you a gimbal. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. But but seriously, um, this is John Cruz, uh, and uh, I obviously have have something going on. And I was diagnosed with Parkinson's twenty years ago this year, actually. Um, so uh, I've I've chosen the Davis Finney Foundation over the years to be my voice for Parkinson's. If you're not familiar with the Davis Finney Foundation, Davis Finney is one of the winningest cyclists in American history. Uh, He's the roadie, if you guys remember those roadies out there, um, all that lycra and stuff, but uh, he is just a great man. Um, when he was diagnosed with Parkinson's, he decided to make a difference in people's lives. Um, and his, his choice was to start a foundation. And that foundation uh, obviously wishes for a cure for Parkinson's because there is no cure at this time. But they recognize that you have to live with Parkinson's. And your caregivers are having to live and take care of us. And the Davis Finney Foundation, that's what they do, is they look for a cure 
but they look for uh, ways to enhance the quality of life for Parkinson's sufferers and their caregivers. So uh, I appreciate all of you supporting the Davis Finney Foundation. Uh, it certainly means a lot to me. Um, I know we all have something, right? So I think it's important to give back to our communities, whether it's BMX or a, a foundation that's close to your heart. If you don't have one, please choose mine. I appreciate you. Well, thank you, John Cruz. You certainly have made a difference in a lot of lives, including mine, and giving us the opportunity to do something good for somebody else is, is fantastic. So thank you. Thank you so much. And on behalf of John Cruz, please find a way to give something to the Davis Finney Foundation on behalf of John Cruz, the Dirty Knobs, and your entire BMX family. Thank you very much. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one, you bunch of dirty knobs. So please do that. Subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Comment if you have anything to say. We'd love to hear it. And uh, we will be back out here in two weeks with another one. And thanks to our sponsors. Speaking of which, we are going to read some commercials to you now. Thanks for uh, showing our sponsors the love because they're showing it to us. Thanks again. And uh, we'll catch up to you soon. And then sing it out right now. All right, coming live and direct from the Colt Clubhouse in Santa Ana, California. Come on down and get all your BMX needs. We're giving away free air for your tires. <laughs> That's all I got, brother. That's great. That's great. All right. Now. It's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> Kenda, designed for your journey on the road, on the trail, or on the racetrack, you can count on Kenda quality. Our tires are engineered for performance and value across a wide range of interests and applications. See why Kenda is the right choice. It's your move. Imagine how bikes can lead to a healthier, more connected world. Bikes set us apart, free to explore and move, and experience our relationships with people and places like nothing else can. At Saris, we don't just imagine a more bikeable world. We're all in, making it happen. As our Sun Tour shares, your passion of cycling. We are committed to giving you the highest level of service in the industry, along with products that hopefully will exceed your expectations. Serving riders is the cornerstone of our business, and we pride ourselves in doing it. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Velocity Bike Park is the premier bike park for riders in Southern California. With 25 miles of world-class trails, obstacles, flow track, and races for mountain biking, gravel, and BMX. Yeah, Ultra Max. Did you ever find yourself outside on a hot summer day, maybe washing your car? I don't know what happens. But all of a sudden, your shirt is wet and you're all full of suds. So you just take it off just for the neighbors. Well, the neighbors called and they want you to buy a new Ultra Max t shirt. Not available where fundraising car washes are, but can you still buy an Ultra Max t shirt at dirtyknobs.com? Ultra Max. <laughs> You guys are one take wonders, man. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Toby Henderson, founder of Box, co founder of American BMX Companies, the owner of Race Inc., Botima, and Cook Brothers Racing. We brought these two companies together to bring you the best quality product you can get for a BMX bike. We're all about the rider, so please check out our Level Up and Rider First programs. See you at the track. ODI Grips, the world leader in grip technology, home of the lock-on grip system. Check them out over at www.odigrips.com. 4416 Designs commercial, take one. There you go. <laughs> All right, 4416 Designs. We make shirts, but we don't sell them. Uh, we're just giving back to the sport. If you're out at Ukaipa BMX and you need a shirt, Hit me up. I'll hook you up with one.
Yeah, I love that. Mega Design Group is a full-service marketing firm. They handle everything from logos to advertising to packaging. Having over 25 years' experience in the print and marketing fields, they can handle any hurdle. Check it out at megadesigngroup.com. Carbone Cartel, for the finest carbon BMX racing products in the market. Make sure you check us out at carbonecartelbmx.com. Our products are ridden by the best in the sport. Drew Polk, Nick Long, and many, many more. This isn't the cheap shit you get from Ali Bobbitt. Make sure you check us out again at carbonecartelbmx.com. Cool Stop Brake Pads. High performance bicycle brake pads since 1977. Check them out at coolstop.com. That's K O O L S T O P.com. Supercross BMX. What can we say? Our lives revolve around BMX. Founded in 1989 to build the ultimate BMX race frame, they've never strayed from that vision. Hey, for more details, check it out at supercrossbmx.com. Hey everyone, this is Brian Wilson with ProGate. We are the official gate supplier for UCI and the Olympics. We even make a gate that you can practice on in your driveway at home. Wait a minute, who else are you making a gate for? We're making a gate for Dirty Fest. You guys got to come and check it out. Whatever Dirty Fest needs for this track, we're going to supply it. We're not some French knockoff, you know. We're the gold standard in BMX gates. And make sure to check us out at progate.net and bmxtracksupply.com, and we'll see you at Dirty Fest for sure. Take care, everybody. Hey, folks, this is Mike Rodriguez, a.k.a. Mr. Crit. I've been racing and making number plates since 1980, you know, like when they used to do one-pedal starts. But, you know, Crip Blade has been around for 43 years. The last four decades, the who's who of BMX have raced a crit number plate straight to the handlebars. And, you know, you get that guy, Mike Savage, the international man of BMX, still doing it strong. And, you know, back in the day, the plates used to be reversible because there was multiple sanctions. And you could put, you know, one sanction on one side, one on the other. Now, you just got one. But crit is still reversible. And that logo is still on the back. For guys like Mike and your rad guys, you know, like Mike Miranda, who would turn those handlebars and twist them up. And we got it rad just for you. All right. Hey, where will we see those plates? Those plates you can see at every single bike shop that, that, that stocks BMX stuff in the USA and Canada. And where will you be at? Will you be at an event sometime soon? Damn, I'm sponsoring the Dirty Fest. And I can't wait to come out to Southern California and, and get dirty. Amy grips, still made here in the USA, used by world champions like me, Tommy Brackens. If you want to know more about the best grips on earth, go to amy.com. If you have a Senna cycling helmet, you know what it's like to ride connected. Senna got their start in communications for the motorcycling industry, where they're now a leader. Senna brought their same tech that goes into those helmet-to-helmet -helmet motorcycle communication systems into cycling helmets. Senna bike helmets have an integrated microphone and two speakers hidden right into the shell. Senna helmets connect together on a mesh or Bluetooth network so you can talk to your friends while you ride without shouting over wind noise, even if you're not side by side. That's super cool, especially in the trails. Senna helmets also pair with smartphones so you can listen to your playlist without blocking out ambient noise and you can take phone calls and even hear turn by turn GPS directions. Ready? <laughs> and that's going in. Yeah. <laughs> We need a doing. All right. What's your nickname for, uh, for like from the mic? Do you have a no? I don't. You don't have? I don't really have a nickname. It's just Mike. Oh, just Mike on the mic. Name my app. That's, <laughs> she got one. That's getting in. Yeah. <laughs> We're putting that in. Hi, I'm Mike Miller, author of Day One by Michael Miller. And a special offer going out. Anybody who buys the book between now and Dirty Fest, which is April 28th through 30th, I'm going to take all the money from the book and send it to the Davis Finney Foundation for those with Parkinson's. So get your copy on Amazon.com and 
we'll make a donation. Hey, what was the name of that book again? Day One by Mike, Michael Miller, which is me. I'm sorry. Hey, what was that name again? Day One by Michael Miller. Hey, support the podcast that support us, our friends, uh, the fine folks over there at All Things BMX, which is our favorite Wednesday night live podcast, as you know. Uh, our buddies over there at Beer Budget BMX, uh, Big Bike BMX, and BMX Weekly. Check them out. Check them out. Our friends. What's up, everybody? It's your friend Isaac from Big Bike BMX, and I've got a podcast with my best friend, 80s BMX Craig. Yep. And guess what, you guys? If you have enjoyed your time here on the Dirty Knobs podcast, we'd love for you guys to come over and hang out with us at Big Bike BMX where we've got all your old school legends and BMX from the past and today at Big Bike BMX. Isaac, come check us out. We'd love the opportunity to win you over. And if not, hey, it's just another place to talk about BMX with your grimy friends. It's fun. Hey, Dale Holmes, I want to tell you something. One of my favorite podcasts that I never miss is BMX Weekly. Even though it has an accent, I still love it. <laughs> Cheers, Mike. You can get all the podcasts on bmxweekly.com. Old school, mid school, today school. Check it out. Yeah, BMX Weekly. <laughs> hey, here we go. Hey, Beer Budget BMX, baby. Coming at you live from the Beer Budget Studios over here at the Hack Shack Quarantine. Oh, man, we're coming in hotter than Satan's nutsack. Yeah, we are dirtier than an Alabama strip club where reclass pros go and get lap dances by their half sister yeah the only show that, that'll make you second guess your life choices like a amish on an e-bike hey if you guys enjoy what you just listened to make sure you tune in every wednesday night to the all things bmx show the only live streaming podcast show in the game right now even ask mike he's been on vicente's been on still waiting for that other guy to come on the show you can find us on youtube twitch and facebook and you can also find us at allthingsbmxshow.com. Keep it dirty. Yo! Just about oh. here in the end of Jay's airline toilet story. Oh. No, I, I uh, took a... I took the red eye last night and I couldn't sleep. I was just telling Mike, I, I didn't sleep like 15, 20, maybe 20 minutes. But, you know, I've got this routine whenever I get on the plane, like I'm trying to make sure I go to the bathroom, you know, because I don't want to get stuck. I usually take a window if, you know, uh, so that I can lean against the lean against the, the wall. Yeah. And uh, and my stomach didn't feel right before I get on. I'm like, oh, should I run? You know, should I run to the bathroom? And and then I was like, fuck it. And then I just got on the plane and like an hour and a half later, I'm like, my stomach is, is not feeling good. And already, and it's a red eye EC. So pe as you know, people are already sleeping. It's like an hour and a half into the flight. The two people next to me are sleeping. They're snoring already. And they have no idea you're about to shit on them. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm waiting. This, this is an hour and a half of already kind of like trying to tuck myself off the ledge. Maybe, it'll fix, maybe yeah. it'll fix itself. <laughs> right situation and then to to learn that one of the bathrooms of the two in the back is broken <laughs> so i'm i'm playing it out in my head like if i wait longer more people will be asleep and there won't be a line and i could just like zoom into it uh <laughs> don't say zoom don't say zoom right now <laughs> oh go yeah but anyway i ended up waking them up I had to run back there. Luckily, there was nobody, nobody waiting. And, and then you, uh, and then you hung out in the bathroom for a half hour. Well, that was another thing. You know, I'm thinking all these things in my head. Oh, should I just stay back there, like with the flight attendants, and yeah. chill with them for a while in case I got to go again? Yeah. Uh, but uh, it ended up being okay. But the other, this was the other part. The other capper that sucked is um, I picked. I got picked emergency exit because you get more room. But it's freaking cold over there at night. Like it's it's chilly, and I was freezing. <laughs> mm. I was freezing. It's okay I if you're trying to sleep. It's okay it, if you're. Asleep. 
yeah if i fell asleep then i wouldn't know it but i was like awake so i'm freezing i mean it was just it was like the perfect storm of of sucking and dude uh, i don't i don't do the red eye bro yeah but if i come in over here i love the red eye i waste the day no yeah yeah do you sleep on airplane ec uh yeah oh i do you're a perfect red eye customer. Yeah, then why uh, wouldn't you take it? You you know, all you need is three, four hours, three hours. Yeah, but it's it's junk sleep, dude. It's not good sleep. It's mm. shitty sleep. It is. It is. You're right. It is. So when you I'll get, take, I'll take any sleep I can get. Yeah. So I just plan my schedule so that I get good sleep, fly yeah. during the day, and and that way I'm if when I do red eye when I get to where I'm going, I always feel like crap. So then I'm miserable. I'm not yeah. in a good mood. I don't like to be in a bad mood. I'm miserable all the time, so it doesn't matter. It makes no difference. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the level. I'm not going to be miserable in a second. There you go. What do you got there? I got one of these guys. I got an 805. Ah. I don't know where this came from, but it ended up in my fridge. I haven't bought beer in I don't know how long. Seriously, I haven't. But this is sitting in my fridge. So I was like, okay. There could have been a lot you, of that. I know where you can get. Soon. I know where you can find some beer that's four years old <laughs> in that trailer. That's right. E EC dumped it. I did. Yeah. After I traced, I tried it. I tried it. <laughs> yeah. We. Hey, that we, born on date. That's serious business. Man. I told you. I told we you the reason it. why they rotate. <laughs> yep. And then yeah. and we tried it, and then we used that vinegar to clean toilets. Oh, <laughs> it, it was a combination of Modelo and Italian dressing. That's what it was. Mike is putting it in the in the cooler with with ice, and I'm like, "You realize that there's a reason why there's dates on those things? Yeah. Like, it's, nah, ah, it's, that's it's a okay. scam. It's that's okay. all the scam. <laughs> that shit was, dude. That was sour. That yeah. was that was bitter beer, man. That's right. That's no right. good. It was smooth. Smooth. Had a little after zing to her. Dude, the bite. Had yeah. a bite? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like, like, like straining it through a dirty sock. I know. It's crazy. Oh. Man. Yeah. That's the first time I ever threw a beer away. Ooh. Anyway. Hey, this is John Cruz. Uh, no, we're not having an earthquake. I have Parkinson's. What, what do you think of that, Michael? I, some we ought to pitch in and get you a gimbal. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. But but seriously, um, this is John Cruz, uh, and uh, I obviously have have something going on. And I was diagnosed with Parkinson's twenty years ago this year, actually. Um, so uh, I've I've chosen the davis finney foundation over the years to be my voice for parkinson's if you're not familiar with the davis finney foundation davis finney is one of the winningest cyclists in american history uh he's the roadie if you guys yeah remember those roadies out there um all that lycra and stuff but uh he is just a great man. Um, when he was diagnosed with Parkinson's, he decided to make a difference in people's lives. Um, and his, his choice was to start a foundation. And that foundation uh, obviously wishes for a cure for Parkinson's because there is no cure at this time. But they recognize that you have to live with Parkinson's. And your caregivers are having to live and take care of us. And the Davis Finney Foundation, that's what they do, is they only look for a cure, but they look for uh, ways to enhance the quality of life for Parkinson's sufferers and their caregivers. So uh, I appreciate all of you supporting the Davis Finney Foundation. Uh, it certainly means a lot to me. Um, I know we all have something, right? So I think it's important to give back to our communities, whether it's BMX or a, a foundation that's close to your heart. 
If you don't have one, please choose mine. I appreciate you. Well, thank you, John Cruz. You certainly have made a difference in a lot of lives, including mine. And giving us the opportunity to do something good for somebody else is, is fantastic. So thank you. Thank you so much. And on behalf of John Cruz, please find a way to give something to the Davis Finney Foundation on behalf of John Cruz, the Dirty Knobs, and your entire BMX family. Thank you very much. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one, you bunch of dirty knobs. So please do that. Subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Comment if you have anything to say. We'd love to hear it. And uh, we will be back out here in two weeks with another one. And thanks to our sponsors. Speaking of which, we are going to read some commercials to you now. Thanks for uh, showing our sponsors the love because they're showing it to us. Thanks again. And uh, we'll catch up to you soon. And then sing it out right now. All right, coming live and direct from the Colt Clubhouse in Santa Ana, California. Come on down and get all your BMX needs. We're giving away free air for your tires. <laughs> That's all I got, brother. That's great. That's great. All right. Now. It's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> Kenda, designed for your journey on the road, on the trail, or on the racetrack. You can count on Kenda quality. Our tires are engineered for performance and value across a wide range of interests and applications. See why Kenda is the right choice. It's your move. Imagine how bikes can lead to a healthier, more connected world. Bikes set us apart, free to explore and move, and experience our relationships with people and places like nothing else can. At Saris, we don't just imagine a more bikeable world. We're all in, making it happen. As our Sun Tour shares, your passion of cycling. We are committed to giving you the highest level of service in the industry, along with products that hopefully will exceed your expectations. Serving riders is the cornerstone of our business, and we pride ourselves in doing it. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Velocity Bike Park is the premier bike park for riders in Southern California. With 25 miles of world-class trails, obstacles, flow track, and races for mountain biking, gravel, and BMX. Ultramax. Ultramax is proud to introduce a new tire inflator. Do your hands get really tired from pumping? The up and down motion wear your arms out? Well, the geniuses over at Ultramax have a new tire inflator that will leave your hands free for more important tasks, not available where electric fans or mag wheels are sold. But you can get an Ultramax or Dirty Fest t-shirt at www.dirtyknobs.com. Hi everybody, Toby Henderson, founder of Box, co-founder of American BMX Companies, the owner of Race Inc, Botima, and Cook Brothers Racing. We brought these two companies together to bring you the best quality product you can get for a BMX bike. We're all about the rider, so please check out our Level Up and Rider First programs. See you at the track. ODI Grips. The world leader in grip technology, home of the lock on grip system. Check them out over at www.odigrips.com. 4416 Designs commercial, take one. There you go. <laughs> All right, 4416 Designs. We make shirts, but we don't sell them. Uh, we're just giving back to the sport. If you're out at Ukaipa BMX and you need a shirt, hit me up. I'll hook you up with one. Yeah, I love that. Mega Design Group is a full-service marketing firm. They handle everything from logos to advertising to packaging. Having over 25 years' experience in the print and marketing fields, they can handle any hurdle. Check it out at megadesigngroup.com. Carbone Cartel, for the finest carbon BMX racing products in the market. Make sure you check us out at CarboneCartelBMX.com. Our products are ridden by the best in the sport. Drew Polk, Nick Long, and many, many more. 
This isn't the cheap shit you get from Alibaba. Make sure you check us out again at CarboneCartelBMX.com. Cool Stop Brake Pads. High performance bicycle brake pads since 1977. Check them out at CoolStop.com. That's K O O L S T O P.com. Supercross BMX. What can we say? Our lives revolve around BMX. Founded in 1989 to build the ultimate BMX race frame, they've never strayed from that vision. Hey, for more details, check it out at supercrossbmx.com. Hey everyone, this is Brian Wilson with ProGate. We are the official gate supplier for UCI and the Olympics. We even make a gate that you can practice on in your driveway at home. Wait a minute, who else are you making a gate for? We're making a gate for Dirty Fest. You guys got to come and check it out. Whatever Dirty Fest needs for this track, we're going to supply it. We're not some French knockoff, you know. We're the gold standard in BMX gates. And make sure to check us out at progate.net and bmxtracksupply.com. And we'll see you at Dirty Fest for sure. Take care, everybody. Hey, folks, this is Mike Rodriguez, a.k.a. Mr. Crit. I've been racing and making number plates since 1980, you know, like when they used to do one pedal starts. But, you know, Crip Blade has been around for 43 years. The last four decades, the who's who of BMX have raced a crit number plate straight to the handlebars. And, you know, you get that guy, Mike Savage, the international man of BMX, still doing it strong. And, you know, back in the day, the plates used to be reversible because there was multiple sanctions. And you could put, you know, one sanction on one side, one on the other. Now you just got one. But crit is still reversible. And that logo is still on the back. For guys like Mike and your rad guys, you know, like Mike Miranda, who would turn those handlebars and twist them up. And we got it rad just for you. All right. Hey, where will we see those plates? Those plates you can see at every single bike shop that, that, that stocks BMX stuff in the USA and Canada. And where will you be at? Will you be at an event sometime soon? Damn, I'm sponsoring the Dirty Fest. And I can't wait to come out to Southern California and, and get dirty. Amy grips, still made here in the USA, used by world champions like me, Tommy Brackens. If you want to know more about the best grips on earth, go to amy.com. If you have a Senna cycling helmet, you know what it's like to ride connected. Senna got their start in communications for the motorcycling industry, where they're now a leader. Senna brought their same tech that goes into those helmet-to-helmet -helmet motorcycle communication systems into cycling helmets. Senna bike helmets have an integrated microphone and two speakers hidden right into the shell. Senna helmets connect together on a mesh or Bluetooth network so you can talk to your friends while you ride without shouting over wind noise, even if you're not side by side. That's super cool, especially in the trails. Senna helmets also pair with smartphones so you can listen to your playlist without blocking out ambient noise and you can take phone calls and even hear turn by turn GPS directions. Ready? <laughs> and that's going in. Yeah. <laughs> We need a doing. All right. What's your nickname for uh, for like from the mic? Do you have a no? Don't. You don't have. I don't really have a nickname. It's just Mike. Oh, just Mike on the mic. Pain in my ass. <laughs> she got one. That's getting in. Yeah. <laughs> We're putting that in. Hi, I'm Mike Miller, author of Day One by Michael Miller. And a special offer going out. Anybody who buys the book between now and Dirty Fest, which is April 28th through 30th, I'm going to take all the money from the book and send it to the Davis Finney Foundation for those with Parkinson's. So get your copy on Amazon.com and we'll make a donation. Hey, what was the name of that book again? Day One by Mike, Michael Miller, which is me. I'm sorry. Hey, what was that name again? Day One by Michael Miller. Hey, support the podcast that support us, our friends, uh, the fine folks over there at All Things BMX, which is our favorite Wednesday night live podcast, as you know. Uh, our buddies over there at Beer Budget BMX. 
Big Bike BMX and BMX Weekly. Check them out. Check them out. Our friends. What's up, everybody? It's your friend Isaac from Big Bike BMX, and I've got a podcast with my best friend, 80s BMX Craig. Yep. And guess what, you guys? If you have enjoyed your time here on the Dirty Knobs podcast, we'd love for you guys to come over and hang out with us at Big Bike BMX, where we've got all your old school legends and BMX from the past and today at Big Bike BMX. Isaac, come check us out. We'd love the opportunity to win you over. And if not, hey, it's just another place to talk about BMX with your grimy friends. It's fun. Hey, Dale Holmes, I want to tell you something. One of my favorite podcasts that I never miss is BMX Weekly. Even though it has an accent, I still love it. <laughs> Cheers, Mike. You can get all the podcasts on bmxweekly.com. Old school, mid school, today's school. Check it out. Yeah, BMX Weekly. <laughs> hey, here we go. Hey, Beer Budget BMX, baby. Coming out you live from the beer budget studios over here at the hack shack quarantine oh man we're coming in hotter than satan's nutsack yeah we are dirtier than an alabama strip club where reclass pros go and get lap dances by their half sister yeah the only show that'll make you second guess your life choices like a amish on an e-bike hey if you guys enjoy what you just listened to make sure you tune in every wednesday night to the all things bmx show the only live streaming podcast show in the game right now even ask mike he's been on vicente's been on still waiting for that other guy to come on the show you can find us on youtube twitch and facebook and you can also find us at all things bmx show.com keep it dirty Yoda. Yo. <laughs> Had to set my whole my whole game up again. It was not uh actually it's a little low or something. It's not right here, my You out of my... practice, man. You out of practice. Yeah. My table is low, should be higher. It's, it's a lot of a lot of things. Well, look at this. I'm resting my arm on my steering wheel. Oh, <laughs> oh man! Yeah, man, it's a Friday. Where um, where did you have to pull over? Not in the best part of town. I'll tell. Not in the best part of Los Angeles. I'll tell you that. So you're in LA. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to the reunion NBA reunion? Yeah. Is that, is that today? Uh, there's a pre-party tonight at Tom Christopher's house. Oh, man. and then there's uh then the big things tomorrow night by the way i took this fucking red eye last night i didn't sleep 10 15 minutes maybe on a red eye i had so many problems on that plane i couldn't even begin to tell you it was the most miserable flight i think i've had in quite a long time i uh he sees late. I uh, I say, come on, EC. We I can't. Like, I mean, I'm running on battery. <laughs> I uh, ha pick a window seat when I do the red eye, right? Because uh, yeah, so you can so lean I can lean. I can lean. Nobody's touching me, and uh, my I had I must have eaten something because my stomach got a little got started to get a little crazy before I got on a plane. I'm like. Oh man, should I run to the bathroom and you know, like, I don't want to get caught up there five hours, five and a half hours of, you know, sweating it out, literally, um, which happened like an hour and a half into the flight. I'm like, fuck. And I'm on the window and the two people next to me are already sleeping. Um, so I had to wake them up. Yo, 